Digital Marketing Radio, episode 93, Google Plus for Business Tips. DigitalMarketingRadio.com I'm David Bain and this is Digital Marketing Radio, um, weekly interviews with digital marketing experts. Find out everything we do at DigitalMarketingRadio.com The Big Interview with David Bain so today I'm joined by Martin Sherrington. <laughs> Martin, welcome to DMR. It's good. Good to see you, David Blaine. No, David Bain. David Bain <laughs> Martin, I've been practicing your surname for all evening. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the easiest. Good to be here. Well, no, no, thanks a lot for joining me. Well, well, Martin's a consultant, a speaker, a trainer, and coach in all things Google. And um, he's a community manager for Plus Your Business. And you can find him over at Plus yourbusiness.com. Um, so getting started with Google Plus then, um, is Google Plus a social <laughs> layer or a social network? What would you say, Martin? So I think that a lot of people from the outside, they look at it and this, this in part is to blame because people pick up their phone and they go, yeah, I've got the app, got that Google Plus thing on my phone and they don't necessarily engage on the social platform side. They don't click the app, they don't go in. But when you come to a desktop, you start to see it very differently. And when you change your view of what's going on with Android and with, with other things as well, it starts to change your view considerably. Google have got an aspect, which is Google Plus, a social destination, but also in Gmail, in Google Drive, in YouTube, second biggest search engine in the world, in Google.com, which I'm sure we'll be talking about a lot, with Maps too. All of it has got aspects of Google Plus in it. And this is the bit which is the, the social layer that's gone through all of their products and services and the same with Google Play and Google Wallet and other things. And that's the bit that's kind of embedded. And if people kind of look and go, well, do you use Google? Well, it's likely you're touching on Google+, Plus, even if you don't use the social destination on the profile side of it. So it has, it's, it's, not, it's a huge thing they've done. They've allowed this sort of integration to occur and settle down over the last almost four years now. And people don't necessarily understand that Google Plus is like the backbone that runs throughout a lot of these things. Okay. Um, so Google Plus is very well here and staying here for the foreseeable future then? I think that, I mean, Bradley Horowitz took over and there was a bit of a kind of kerfuffle that the press ran with. And they're going, oh, he didn't mention Google Plus when Bradley took over. What he says is Google's photos and Google streams. And the third part is the Google Hangouts. And then this is where you come to the, the desktop. The experience on desktop is, and we're in, a, we're in a Google Hangout on air now, and that's live integrated into, or live streamed into YouTube, and, and, and it stays over there. And you've got the, it's like a dashboard when you're on a desktop, and it all kind of fits in, but it's all differentiated. The photos aren't, you know, it, there's a separate area for that, and the Hangouts is another area, and it, it's it's a way to see. Think about it in terms of a dashboard. So is it here to stay in terms of all of the products and services and all talking to each other using the principles of Google Plus? Yes. But none of us know what could happen in the future with Google's plans because they they are moving. Mm. You know, it, it's, it's a, a giant company, huge revenues, massive profits, and what they do is they look at what works and they adjust course to, to make it work better for them as a business. But in terms of my view, I would say that the social destination works when you're in it and you're using it in the, the communities, and for search, it's unbelievable. People are missing a huge opportunity. But so I think that people need to open up what Google Plus is to understand, is it here to stay? So does the social destination work for the majority of people and businesses out there? Or would you say that it's um, more of a, a niche area um, for certain types of people and businesses to be in? And the majority of people will be in the layer of Google Plus and use some of the facilities, yeah. but perhaps won't be that involved with the whole social networking thing within Google Plus. It depends. So let's look at a local type business. And you've got uh, somebody who's got a front door or delivery area. And they could go, well, I don't use Google. Well, actually, if you've claimed your page, that page is a Google Plus page within the higher level of what's called Google My Business or My Business. Mm -hmm. And so having the shop times and having reviews, all of that data that gets pulled into Google Maps in search is coming from Google Plus. So they're using Google Plus, and they just may not know that. Now, in terms of a brand page or in terms of a profile, one of the biggest things is building a network and influencing people's search results. 
one of the things I'm sure you know this, David, but a lot of people don't realize Google.com's default is private. Hmm. So this happened. It used to be called personalized, but personalized is, is broader. Private means that Google Plus posts can surface in Google.com for the people that have you in circles. So when you see a little face next to a, um, any search result now, it's a Google Plus post. And if people add you in and you build your network, then it's likely the content that surfaces for them is relevant to them from the people within their circles as well as other results because it's private. So one of the things is, is being able to influence a lot of people just by networking with them. So then you go, okay, well, what else? In private communities, there's a couple of hundred thousand, uh, so a couple of hundred thousand communities on Google+, both private and public, and the ability to network and to connect on a thread with somebody, have a little conversation, and then jump into a hangout, a bit like we are now. It's a seamless way of networking. And you start to see that it's about the experience, when you have it, of connecting people. And this is what Google is saying. It's about connecting people in new ways. And when you come to content, the ability, and this is the technique that we use, the ability to have around about 100 people that are the right people engaging on that content in Google+, plus plus one comment sharing it, and it then moving into search, getting amplified, moving into search, is the method that many of us are using for content marketing to get search results. And unless you build your tribe around your content, you can't do that very easily. And Twitter and Facebook's different. It doesn't have Google.com attached to it. Okay, okay, Twitter is going to be pulling in tweets, but that's not the same as the amplification methods of moving your content, your blog content, into search through building communities. And this is really the main thing. And I think if everybody who's listening to this can, can take away, that's what many of us are doing. This is why it's, it's so powerful for social search engine optimization, build communities around your content, it amplifies into search. Okay, so building communities, absolutely key there. Um, but what about um, if you're uh, perhaps an independent consultant or coach, and um, your business brand relates um, highly around yourself personally, um, perhaps not necessarily your name, but um, your business um, is is the majority about you? Is it then in that instance more appropriate to actually build up a profile on Google about yourself personally, or building up a business business page about your brand and then trying to build up a community around there? I always say start with your profile. If you are your brand and you can't sell it in a way, unless you got rid of it a bit, start with your profile because people relate to profiles better than they do to pages to start with if they don't know and trust the brand. Then once you've built your profile up, and you, I usually say up to around about a thousand people following you, then you can share the content if you decide to start a page back through your profile and you've already got an audience that's, that's there. But you have to ask, do you need to set up both? And that's very often one of the things that we look at is, do you need to? If you go to go on plusyourbusiness.com and search for any keywords, it's likely the solutions. I've written about 250 blog posts for people on the, the criteria when you choose one or the other. Because pages, you can schedule posts, and at the moment, you can't do that on, on profiles and things like that. So, so mm -hmm. there are advantages. But, but people like just people doing business, being social. you know. And that's for brand building, it's unbelievable. And we go to content. Content that people create needs to be trusted. And that's really the starting process, is you go and you meet people. You plus one comment, share their content, and then bring your content in. Little by little, and then people go, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll watch, I'll listen to, to David's content because he's been friendly to me, he's approached me, he's connecting with me, and then the relationships build, and it's just brilliant for relationship building. And if you're really busy as an independent business person, is it um, worthwhile focusing on just one social community, perhaps Google+, Plus? and if so, is Google+, Plus going to be better than... Um, Facebook, or do you think ideally um, someone should be interacting on Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus, Plus at least to begin with? I think that the starting point is to look at your blog and to look at, at where your content is. I think that's the thing is it, that's the central place is look at your website and, and, and the blog is where the content most likely surfaces. So from there you go, okay, well what am I doing? Why am I on Google Plus? It's about distribution and distributing and then finding the people who are going to be the, the community members. And the same then with Twitter and Facebook. But with Google Plus, it's easier to break through the noise still. It's, it, it's an advantage in a way that people aren't just using bots 
all the time and pumping out content. You've got to, the first month, you've got to work hard. You've got to post one comment, share other, you've got to go and tell people you've arrived. And when you do that, because it's got search attached to it, I think it's a huge advantage. You build your community on Google+, you've got all these tools, it's all free, you can break through the noise, people are friendly, the culture. I think there's a little bit, David, I, that we are, I mean, I use Twitter, I use Facebook, I use Pinterest, but my focus is Google+. Plus. We are still, let's face it, it's Google, it's a bit strange, we're still seen as the, the underdog. I still feel that people are like, yeah, that Google+, Plus. it's like, honestly. Once you start doing it and you connect with people, it, it's, it's unbelievable what happens. And then people come to you. And as soon as you start to become an authority and that gets surfaced in search, people find you in search and they go, oh, you're the person to come to for that. So if you've got a, a consultant or a coach or you know, any of that um, independent consultant area, they are able not just to break through the noise, but they're able to become the authority they want to be. You think about how to do that on Facebook or Twitter now, I don't know how easy it is. It's, it, we know what to do on Google Plus to make that work right now. Okay, and um, you've built up, built up an incredible following on Google Plus. I think last time it looked, you've got about a million followers or so, which is just um, absolutely incredible for most people to even fathom. Um, is it is it possible for your your, your average person to um, build up a, a decent amount of followers? Um, and also, kind of a second part to this question: um, in the amount of time that you've been on Google Plus, have you actually seen any trend at all um, with um, the amount of shares that you're getting, the amount of plus ones that you're getting, the amount of comments on your post? Um, is there seasonality? Um, is there popularity waning at all um, at certain times? Okay, so the first part of the question, I built up my following to around about 30,000 people, and that probably took about seven months or so, maybe, maybe a little longer than that. And then I did a project, and I got put on a list by Google that then, and this is going back two years and three months ago, and then I got an increase following. So I got promoted, essentially, as, as when people join Google Plus and things like that, which is one of the reasons why I've got that following, apart from the fact I'm very active. But it, it, it's much more to do with that. Now, I've made it to 30,000. It's actually irrelevant when you get to that point. Social proof, but in terms of the engagement, it's irrelevant. What people need to look at is find your 100 people that are engaging with you all the time. The numbers are a distraction. I always say it, that they matter, but they don't. And they matter if you think they matter. And so that's the social proof bit. If you have 100 people that are authorities or potential customers and are engaging and amplifying your content out through the network, more and more people share and it, and it snowballs on the right content, which leads on to the second thing. I did a, a page called Plus Your Cat. Right? And I did it. It's very tongue I do these things once in a while. I do st I'm, back, I'm back doing stand-up comedy in, in San Francisco, so this is, this is my outlet on Google+. Plus. And I created Plus Your Cat. And I said, I'm going to get a million views on this page and then stopped it. It took me six weeks to get a million views using cat gifts. That's all I did, right? Nothing else, no other, and I had about 200 followers and, and I had a million views. And I said to people, because I train people and, and, and speak about Google+, I said, do not get caught by thinking that getting 500 shares on a cat gif is actually going to change your life whatsoever. What matters is engagement on the content that matters to you most, and what I want is it to surface in search. So, for instance, I had a one post which I move up and down now, and you learn how to do that in search. But I, I, now it's about number three for what is Google. And that's actually if you search for what is Google incognito, it comes in around about number three. It was number one for about I don't know twenty months. And what I'd say is the engagement on that back then, which was it was actually what is Google Plus. It got indexed the same was enormous. People at Google were sharing it, Guy Kawasaki shared it, a huge amount. To get that level of engagement on a piece of content now is harder because many more people are, are, are content marketers, many more people are social media marketers have arrived and are doing things on the platform. Hmm. So, if you engage, you get more engagement. If you stop engaging, you stop. If you're in a saturated niche, and lots of people are writing, of course, it's going to be attention that's split. If, however, you kindle the attention around your content and you, you notice people and you, you give, what I do very often is I'll give away something that, other, that, that people would pay for in order to get increased engagement. And I'll do it privately and I'll say, hey, this is the thing that really matters. You're going to get it for free, but when it comes out, if you want to share it, it would be great. 
and you find that the, the level of engagement goes through the roof. And I've done that time and time again. And it's a really good system and model, but it takes time. And what are two or three different post types that you make on Google Plus on a regular basis that um, consistently get more engagement than, than other types of posts? The main thing is to use good looking images and to put some effort into understanding what gets engagement. And also, I mean, I have a, a branding style and we have rockets for some of the things that we do. So people are used to that sort of stuff. There's a lot of trust that's built. And I know that if I do, for instance, an infographic style and it's sized right, that can get huge engagement. That can get 1,000 plus shares on it. If I put a video out, you've got to make sure that the, vi the, the thumbnail is really, really good and attractive and looks good, even with a play button that's on Google+, and then you get the engagement. But more important than that, I build opt-in circles. And this ties back into the idea that I just said. I say to people, hey, would you like to opt in for this thing to receive notifications? And that is one of the key things you can do on Google+, Plus. you can't do elsewhere, is you share to public, always share public for the maximum reach, and you share to that circle, and you click, because you've said yes, you click notify by email, send an email, which is what it says, hmm. to that circle. Now, you, it could be up to, say, 100 people. But what then happens is they receive not only just a notification, they receive an email, they then jump on the, the content, and it's like you're going to get more engagement. So by understanding the system and understanding that people need to, to be told when something's there, it's like you're going to get much more than if you just put a post out with a nice image. So you've got to use all these things together. So your subscribers get the option to receive your content by email, but of course you don't, I assume, get their email addresses. You, you don't. It's right. Yeah. Firstly, you ask. I, I build these lists. I ask people. And I've just, even though I've been doing this for, for over three years, I re ask people every so often can I just make sure you're happy with receiving things? And then you notify it. You don't get their email address, but they receive an email. So that the Google Plus platform allows you to do this. And they can decide, for instance, if they didn't want somebody that wasn't in their circles to email them, they can change their settings. There's a lot to it on the back end. And yeah. do you think that, in some circumstances, is better than actually building up or trying to build up your own email list database yourself personally? Two different things. One of which is within platform, and the other one is, I mean, I've got a, a, a on the website, I've built up a list, and I still build up a list, and I do uh, it, the, the whole permission marketing side there as well. But the aim is amplification of one piece of content on Google+. That's the outcome to this. It's not a list build where I'm going to send them my weekly newsletter, which I do, or to put them into a, a sequence where they have a course or anything like that. They're actually different. So let's look at what happens when you have the right amount of amplification. Because it really it was saying, how do we get people's attention? That's what we're saying. I'm saying as well as a notification, you get an email at the same time. It's within this kind of social destination feel. And when people share that content, it signals to search that other people think it should be seen and it's trusted. So they plus one, it puts their face to it, it, it kind of links to it, and they comment. And you may have sentiment analysis that starts to come through within the comment section, and they share, which definitely gives a link and it shows people uh, within their network. But then this is what allows it to surface and search. And if you allow, if you don't almost control people's attention, with an intent of this piece of content is important to me, you're almost left with, well, whenever you pick up the email, then it's, you know, it's up to you. But if you've got people active, and this is why you find the people who are on Google+, and they're engaging on Google+, and you build a relationship with them, then you know that those are the ones that are there. Your email, I know, I can tell you now that my email list, I've actually imported, and I have a database that sits on top of Google+, that we created. And I can see where people are active and when they aren't. And I know that my 100 people that I have really tight relationships with, there may be 150 or maybe more, those are the ones that amplify the content and it moves it into search. That's what a lot of it's about, it, it is how do you leverage social into search. Mm, yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly not a, a black and white, um, this is what you do, follow these steps, and it's, it's, it's quite a simple thing, and I, I suppose that's what puts off people coming into Google Plus a little bit. Um, I think Google traditionally, uh, my opinion is that um, they're great technologists, but they're not necessarily the best at actually uh, marketing simple propositions and, and building 
a simple product base that um, a fairly average Joe will actually understand and um, embrace. Yeah, uh, and uh, that's where there's an opportunity for people like me. <laughs> Great point. Um, one other point that I did want to cover with you is, um, well, in relation to my own background, um, I'm have been sort of very SEO focused, you know, for about ten years or so, and um, I've been fed up seeing articles like um, SEO, SEO is dead, SEO, you know, is going to die this year or, or next year, and um, you, you see the same kind of thing with Google Plus. Um, I've noticed that. With a couple of people, um, personally, I've noticed um, Larry Kim from WordStream, particularly, um, writing a couple of articles saying that um, Google Plus will die a death in 2015. Now, is that, in your opinion, sensationalist market marketing to a certain degree um, to encourage conversation, or is that something that that, that is likely to happen? It's it, it's almost. Everybody's asking me this at the moment, David. I knew you were gonna you're gonna ask it. I'm gonna. It goes back to what is Google Plus? It's the social layer. It's circles. Circles get pulled into your contacts. Google Android, biggest smartphone produced on the market. There's gonna be another 2.5 billion Android devices. That's the Google Plus Google ecosystem. It's, it, it draws you in. We've got to see this as Google more than Google+. Plus. In terms of what other people say or do, I kind of just let them do it, and I just sit back. We are, there's a group of people that are doing very well in search and very well with social that are making the most of this. Mm. And I'm going to say something, which I, I'm on an NDA with Google anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know... Uh, Whatever I say, I'm, 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 you know, I, I'm, I'm saying, saying what I'm saying. <laughs> I, th I, th I think you should have a couple of drinks and continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, water. Yeah. So yes, it, it's something which people like. People that aren't using Google Plus a lot tend to be very hard on it, and we've watched the cascade of that information uh, a lot. But they're not on there. They don't understand it. And that's it, really. That's my comment on it, David. You're not going to get any more out of me. <laughs> no, that's great. And it's also why I wanted to frame it around my own experience with um, different areas that I focused on as well. Because I, I ended up doing a, a presentation myself, a seminar um, called Why SEO Will Never Die. Um, because as long as search engines exist or um, even facilities on the web such as app stores exist that people can search then optimizing your product or service to appear on that you know, is, is, is not a focus that will disappear at all so um, tactics disappear of course and um, perhaps different facets of, of Google Plus might um, change slightly over time but um, Certainly, the, in my opinion, the involvement of Google into an interactive experience isn't isn't going to change. No, and and, and so it's a social experience now. You know, we are part of it, and that's certainly as you feel is that you know, it is. It's not this. You have a website, and it's over there. It's actually connected. And if you think what's going to happen with the plus one buttons, when you plus one on the website, it's a plus one in share button. That content goes into your profile, goes into the stream based upon who's following you. So when you see it as an ecosystem, it makes a lot of sense. I'm just going to give an example of, of what is going on and what people can do. I had one blog post I mentioned, what is Google Plus and what is Google. It had, it's had 300,000 unique visitors, which isn't the story. The story is look up social SEO facts or social SEO evidence and I did, did this as a case study to show people it took two days to get to number one for that search term. But what then happened, I created a quick video to explain what I'd done, and I put it on YouTube, and I shared it again into Google+. Plus. I probably had 50 shares or something like that. It's top three for social SEO on YouTube when you go incognito. Mm. That's the whole thing. If people can understand it's one ecosystem, and if you have a community of people who are engaging then it works. And if you're on the outside and you're not producing content, you're not building, relationships won't go, it's all about the relationships and how you connect with the right people for you. And that's what's not going to disappear is we are now connecting on a global scale. And that's what the Android devices very much are pushing forward on. 
And I think that the, the we've got to realize that, that the head, uh, just below um, Larry Page, is a chap called uh, Punda, and he was Android. And so you, the, the experience very much is about people entering into the ecosystem via their Android devices now. Yes, yeah. I, I, it's um, great to actually build up your own community. It's really essential to build up your own community. Um, one example that I've got is um, I've got a, a couple of videos on, on YouTube that are approaching 100,000 views per video. And um, the, the way I've achieved that is simply, obviously, you've got to make sure it's great content to begin with. Um, but um, to if you have that community, all you have to do is drive them towards it to begin with. Get that interaction, get those views, get those likes to begin with. And those positive social signals are going to significantly be picked up by whatever search engine you're talking about to begin with, YouTube or Google Plus or, you know, or Google. And, and then that's going to keep on rolling. Um, and if it's great content, people keep on sharing it. So wherever you're building up that community, um, it's 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 essential when it comes to content marketing. Absolutely, and I think you, you've said it there. You talk about Google Plus. Talk about YouTube. I mean, now I've got top slots for top five for Google Plus, just as a search term, within YouTube and for Google Hangouts. How did I get those? Google Plus. It wasn't. I didn't go into YouTube and say I'm going to build it here. I use Google Plus, building the communities around that, in order. Well, and actually, it's just a natural consequence. It happened on YouTube. And it happens in search as well. And I think this is why you know the aim. It's been great to talk today, but because it, people need to open their mind up to what Google Plus is. It's a way of people connecting, having conversations around content, and it gets amplified. And if people aren't doing it, it's fine. But realise they're missing the trick. I feel. Absolutely. I will. Let's segue quickly into the second section of our discussion. So, focusing your thoughts more on what's happening in digital marketing, what's happened in the past. So, I'm moving on to software I couldn't live without. So, what software do you currently use in your business that, if someone took away from you, it would significantly impact your digital marketing success? The trouble is, you know, I'm going to say Google stuff. Um, let me. We've got, but I sp I spend my entire day within the ecosystem, unless I have to use Skype for some reason. And all of the tools I use, whether it be Buffer, which we use for scheduling, which is great. Um, my Twitter account, somebody else runs, but I'm always replying and, and tweeting, you know, if not replying there. I, I do know how Twitter works, David. I, do. Um, I, I may pop over to Facebook, but I, I use Google AdWords and so on. And honestly, it's Google stuff. In terms of other tools I use, I'm for content creation, I'm, my, my site is built on Genesis. We use Infusionsoft as our software um, uh, email yeah. CRM system, yeah. and it's an amazing, amazing tool. But I'm pretty simple, you know, pretty simple guy when it comes to these sort of things. I mean, I can tell you loads of tools for Google, but for, for Google Plus, but... Do you, do you have any uh, additions um, that makes Google Plus more powerful yeah. for you? Circloscope, circloscope.com, amazing. For managing, not just managing the circles, you can, for instance, take an event and you can drop it in and find out who attended that event. You can put those straight into circle. There's so much you can do, it's incredible. Uh, Nodex, which is nod3x.com for finding influencers. That's incredible. That's across all platforms. And Friends Plus Me, we use to distribute um, our Google Plus posts themselves across the other platforms. I mentioned Buffer. Um, and ones I've been exploring lately, Agora Pulse. I've been exploring as well, but that's not so much on, on Google Plus. That's that's something else we're looking into. But as I say, I, my needs are simple. Well, that's some some great. Just give me the stream and give me some hangouts and things. Hmm? <laughs> One extra question: um, What bit of software um, have you heard good things about? And you've meant to try, um, but you, you're not using it at the moment. And you've meant meant to try at some point in the near future. I would have tried it. I don't. It's a good question, but I don't know. I, did, I, I did. I'm just going to try and say I did download something the other day, and I got rid of it because I thought, why am I using it? I wasn't using it. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing. I tell you what I do, which which is the most brilliant piece. I've got a, a, an ex a Chrome extension, which is called Checker Plus for Google Calendar, and that is the only thing that keeps me on track in my Chrome browser, is the ability to go. Okay, I've got a little nag up there that the next appointment's at six o'clock today. For instance, that is amazing. So I've got it. My, my life is pretty organized. Google Drive, I use all day long, and I have teams of people and, and community. But the thing is, David, I decided to set up a virtual business, and we have virtual meeting rooms, and we have 
communities of people that come together as like a back office. We have that, and we have a sales team as a private community because I wanted to show that we could build this using Google's products and services, and we are the case study. So in a way, I've solved a lot of the things that could have been maybe you know looked at with other software by using Google products. Okay, well you've shared a lot of things there. So what I'll do is I'll leave um, links to every one of those tools in the show notes on digitalmarketingradio.com. Uh, but moving on to I wish I would have. Um, so I'd like to um, you to look back at the very first day that you're involved in trying to market a business online. What didn't you do so well? What do you wish that you would have done differently? All right, this is 1999. I had a, a company called threecourselunch.com, and it was an online training, uh, bite-sized chunk business. What? What? It was before broadband. It was in the UK. Yeah. What do I wish? I wish that AdWords had launched two years earlier, because then I loved AdWords. That would have. That's what I needed. And also, we we tried to do video streaming. This is back, you know. So this is what yeah. 16 years ago. Using and, the real player. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and oh, everything. Oh god. <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> yeah, and and the it was a great idea, but we couldn't stream. You just can't. You just couldn't do it. Man. You're 56k. It took like half an hour to get an image. Yeah. So it was it was knowing when things are. The, it's actually not even that. It's now the difference is build a community of people that love what you do and feel part of it and bring them with you. So for me, on, on Google+, Plus, it's been over three years. It took me two years and three months before I said, right, now I'm going to essentially monetize the activity. And everybody, after four or five months, is going, when are you going to monetize? When are you? And they got to like a year, and they go, what's the matter with you? And they got to two years, and they go, it's clearly insane. What's, what's and I said, no, because we don't have enough evangelism. We're not ready yet. We haven't got everything in place. And so that's what we've been building, really, is, is a much broader base than just simply launch a product and hope for the best, is, is you've got people that are going, this is amazing. You give them a great experience. So... That's the thing, which I, I, I look back many, many years ago, and I didn't focus enough on community building. I was looking at the product being the solution or the distribution. Actually, using social, it's free. You know, it, it's, it's an amazing way, and it's all relationship-based. But I mean, social didn't really kick off until, what, 2006 or something like that, so that yeah. was seven years before that. Um, it's funny, actually, listening to your story there about... Um, how you tried to do video online and things like that. It actually reminded me of Boo.com, um, the online retailer. And they yeah, yeah, tried... yeah, it was about that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. They, they, yeah. they tried to be really fancy with their website yeah. at the time. Of course, browsers, internet speeds just couldn't support that at all. And you, you need exactly. to actually focus on resources and your experience for your users. And I think there's another bit, which is sometimes you've got to just take a step forward every day and not try and get to this final point. And I think that you know what Boo did was incredibly sophisticated, but too soon people you know they couldn't download those images and things like that, or you know couldn't couldn't see them. And the site crashed or something, wasn't it? We're going back. God, you're taking me back now. But I think that you've just got to work with what you've got. And if you go back to the point about the the, the who. Who should do it? Should you do a profile or a page? It's about who do you want to connect with and how can you best connect with them. And if you best connect with as a profile, use that. Best connect as a page, use that. But it should all fit into your overall strategy anyway. You know, I always look strategy and then tactics and then operational. And really, it's at a tactical level is what you're starting to look at. And then you kind of relax and go and enjoy meeting people because that's what people want. It is social. And you can plug into, there's a lot of... of I mean, yesterday I was hanging out with Chris Brogan. He'd asked me to, to hang out about something. We've been, been friends for a while now. And it's like these people are amazing and they're accessible and you can get in touch with them easily on Google+. Plus Because they, they, it's not as busy. I'm trying to get Chris to do a bit more these days. That's interesting. No, it's, it's, it's a good, um, good tip there. <laughs> The this or that round. Okay, uh, moving on to the quick response round. Ten quick questions, just um, two rules. Um, try not to think about the answer too much, and um, you're only allowed to say the word both on one occasion. Ready to go? Oh, go on then. Do it. <laughs> Email or Twitter? Email. Audio or video? Video. Affiliates or display advertising? Affiliates. Facebook or Google Plus? Yeah, well, come on. That was the, that was Google the Plus. Plus. <laughs> I know, just check it. <laughs> Online press releases or one-on-one -on -one relations? One-on-one. -on -one. Paid search or SEO? Both. Email contact form or telephone number? Email contact. Website or app? Website. 
social subscriber or email subscriber? Ugh. Oh, it depends what you mean by social subscriber. It possibly, oh, social, let's do it. Local marketing or global marketing? Depends. You didn't say both. Depends. Depends oh. on the business. Depends on the audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a uh, couple, couple bit of a struggle. Um, you did say um, video rather than audio. Does that mean yeah. that um, uh, you're not so keen on podcasting? Do you think that? No, um, I think podcast is amazing. I just we've never gone after that market to crack. Even though I've got it there, I, I know which way it's going to go, but not yet. Whereas I know how to how to optimize for YouTube, so it, it's been an obvious fit for us. To be focused on that. Yeah. That ten thousand dollar question. So, if I was to give you ten thousand dollars and you had to spend it over the next few days on a single thing to grow your business, what would you spend it on, and how would you measure success? Remarketing. Good answer. And yeah. um, I take it um, on the Google network, or would you use Facebook? I do. I do use Facebook as well. Um, I, I think that. I mean, AdWords I've used since 2001, 2000, well, 2002, I think it is. And Facebook ads I've probably used, I don't know, for how many years. And I think you can do a low, you don't need 10,000. You need whatever it is to make it statistically relevant to test. And the reason I wouldn't spend it, though, right now to do it, because we're testing some stuff on the sales funnel, because we've got enough people that come to the sites in order to go, okay, well, what shall we then scale? And hopefully we'll scale the current model. So I think that you know you've got to do a bit of scientific testing, find out what converts, and then scale. And that's why I would spend it on. Okay. Um, and I'm um, just delving into remarketing just a little bit deeper. Um, is there any particular time scale that you found is optimum in terms of keeping on showing ads to people, like two weeks, four weeks, or something like that, or is that just simply something that you should be testing? To be testing, I am. I would step out at this point and say that a chap on my team called Jim Banks is the person that I would then go, Jim, what would you do? Um, so because I've read a lot of the reports, you don't want to be following people around like a stalker. But at the same time, we know that if you get your face known, and there's trust, and and you serve. This is the thing: you've got to serve people, and it doesn't matter if you're taking up their attention. You've got to got to look after them, and it doesn't matter what the thing is; it's how they feel about that thing. So My number you know, one takeaway. Ah, sorry, I, I always have one finger slip that. there. Oh, oh. I was, okay. was going to ramble. No, but I mean, um, you've offered a lot of great advice in the conversation there. I was, I was going to drill it down just to one takeaway. What would you say is the number one takeaway, the, the kind of single most important thing that um, listeners need to take away and just implement in their own businesses? Google Plus is part of the Google ecosystem. It's got a Google search engine attached to it. And I think that people should ignore a lot of the press and give things a go. That's what I mean. <laughs> um, great advice there, though. Um, so, <laughs> that takes us to the end of our discussion today. So thank you so much for your time and your, you, your focus there. What's the best way for our audience to find out more about you and what you do? Pleasuebusiness.com. Come and see me on Google+. Plus. Come and see, if you, we've got a, a community around about 15,000 people called Plus Your Business, and come and say hello. We'll help you, and we'll help you get started and help you get moving and connected up with people. Go and say hello to Martin. Um, so lovely. Okay, well, thanks again, Martin. Um, we'll see you again on... Thanks for joining us. Um, bye for now. <laughs>